Okay, so we know that God wants us to be free. And he's made that possible, and it's only possible by knowing the truth, and it's only possible by his grace, and it's only possible, uh, well, let's see, by knowing the truth, <laughs> by his grace, and by his purchase of us on the cross. So that's how he's made freedom really possible. But there's also this image that comes to mind whenever you talk about freedom, of maybe this, uh, what you're free from. And I get the picture in my mind of the ball and the chain and, uh, you know, like a, a prisoner who's uh, really having, a, you know, can't get around and they're lugging this thing around. And um, then they are free from it and they can leave it behind. It's no longer weighing them down. Well, in the same way, there's some things that you and I need to be free from and God wants us to be free from. So what are some of the things that God wants to free you from? Well, one of the things that God wants to free us from is worry. God wants to free you this morning from worry. In Matthew chapter 6, listen to what Jesus had to say, uh, beginning in verse 25. He says this, So I tell you, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food, drink, and clothes, doesn't life consist of more than food and clothing? Look at the birds. They don't need to plant or harvest or put food in barns because your heavenly Father feeds them. And you're far more valuable to Him than they are. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Of course not. And why worry about your clothes? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon and all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he more surely care for you? You have so little faith. So don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Why be like the pagans who are so deeply concerned about these things? Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs, and he will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. One of the things that God wants to free us of is anxiety that is caused from worrying about the cares of this life. You see, a relationship with Jesus Christ makes it possible for us to not have to worry about these things. See, some of you are here today and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I am free. I don't really have any great big baggage of sin or whatever, and I'm a Christian or I'm a Christ follower. But the fact of the matter is, you're enslaved in a different way. You're enslaved to worry. And Jesus this morning wants to free you from worry. But there's another thing I'd like you to see that goes right along with this idea of worry, and that is that God wants to free you from want. To free you from want. Uh, Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Another translation of that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. And God wants to free you from the things, or, or rather free you so that you have what you need. You don't have to uh, be desiring or have want in your life. In other words, Jesus wants to fully satisfy you. So he frees us from worry. God can free you from want. But he can also free you this morning from guilt. From guilt. Look at Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. It says this, That is why he is the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people so that all who are invited can receive the eternal, the eternal inheritance God has promised them. Now get this, for Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under that first covenant. What the Bible is saying here is that, that one of the reasons that, or the main reason that Christ died was to set us free from guilt, the guiltiness of sinfulness. A little bit earlier we talked about the fact that God wanted to free us from sin and not 
allow us to have to be uh, bondage in bondage to sin anymore? Well, that's essentially what this is saying also, except uh, God is saying, I want you to not just not feel guilty. I don't want you to have to be guilty anymore. And there's kind of an odd uh, way of sort of saying that, but the, the fact of the matter is Jesus wants to free you from the guilt of your sin. And that's why he took the punishment on the cross for us. So he wants to free you from worry. He wants to free you from want. And he wants to free us from guilt. But even um, amazingly beyond that, God actually wants to free us from the pain and sting of death. And look at Romans chapter 8, verse 10. Romans 8, 10. It says this, Since Christ lives within you, even though your body will die because of sin, your spirit is alive because you have been made right with God. Your spirit is alive because you've been made right with God. And then in verse 18, get these verses. This is amazing. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will give us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, everything on earth was subjected to God's curse. All creation anticipates the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. See, there is hope found in Jesus that says that we can know freedom, real freedom from worry, from want, from guilt, and also from the sting and ugliness of death because we know that life is more than what happens in this body. Well, we've been freed by some things and we've been freed from some things. We're also free to some things. Real freedom by, from, and to. Freedom by, uh, God makes it possible for us to know freedom, I should say, because uh, by knowing the truth, knowing the real truth that only Jesus can set us free. Also by his grace and by God's purchase of us. So, free by. Also real freedom from. God wants to free us from worry. He wants to free us from want. And he wants to free us from guilt. And he wants to free us from the sting of death. Wow, pretty good deal. But not only are we free by and free from, but God also frees us to something. You see, if you're a prisoner, or if you are enslaved, or, in a, uh, or anything like that, in bondage of any kind like that, you are unable to do certain things. And to be freed from that means that now you're able to do something which you could not do before. And one of the things that you and I can do once we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ that we are free now to do, and that is simply this, to really live, to really live. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19 says this, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is so great you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Let me read that one more time. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. See, God wants us to really, really live. He wants to free us from all those other things, and he's made it possible by the things that he did for us. But he wants us to know life in a full and real and meaningful way. We quote this verse often. It's John 10.10. 10. But Jesus pretty much said this. He said, the thief has come to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I have come, this was Jesus talking about himself, I have come that you may have life and may have it more abundantly. And another translation says that you may have life and have it to the full or in all of its richness and fullness. You see, we can't really understand what real life is all about until we have a relationship with Jesus. Imagine that you lived all of your life uh, in a dark room and you could not see, or in a, in a cave or something. And all your life you learned to sort of feel your way around and you saw things very dimly. Well, if you ever found an opening out of that and you found your way out into the sunlight, then you could see things and, and understand the world in a totally different way. And see, when Jesus sets us really free, we can experience life in a full and rich way that we never, ever could before. So, we're free to really live. But one other thing I'd like to share with you this morning is that we are really now, after we have been set free from 
all those things by Jesus, we are now really free to hope. Free to hope. Let me read to you from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 23 through 25. Verse 23 says, And even we Christians, although we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, also grown to be released from pain and suffering, we too wait anxiously for that day when God will give us our full rights as His children, including the new bodies He has promised us. Now that we are saved, we eagerly look forward to this freedom. For if you have already or I'm sorry, if you already have something, you don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. You see, in Jesus Christ and a relationship with Him, we have a hope that, that goes beyond this life to something very exciting and real. And realizing that even though God has said we are now members of His family, that one day we're gonna fully, completely realize it. So no matter how bad it gets on this planet, no matter what kind of challenges you are facing, no matter how difficult your life is getting right now, if Jesus Christ sets you free, you can have a hope that's, that looks forward beyond all that stuff to an awesome and incredible future. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. You know what? We have a hope that's not just beyond this life and death and the problems we have, but we have a hope that says every day has new potential to learn about the love and the power and all the things that God has planned for us as we explore our journey with Him. Well, God wants us all to know true freedom today, and He wants you to know true freedom today because of all the things that He has done so that you can be free from all those other things and that you can have life that has hope and meaning today. Well, God is calling to you. And I'd like to, just as we began this time together, I'd like to pray with you right now because you are on my heart. And I know that God has brought into this room the people that He wants to be here this day. Today can be your personal Independence Day, your personal day of freedom. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment. If you're here this morning and you have never come into a place in your life where you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you, you can pray this prayer, something very similar to this. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me and for purchasing, uh, the, uh, or purchasing me, making it possible that I could be a member of your family. Thank you for taking my sin upon you so that I can have real, true life. Free me today from my sin. I give myself to you. Come into my heart and save me. And I pray this in your name. If you're a Christ follower here today, you might could pray a commitment something like this. Lord, help me to be truly free, free from worry and all of the things that, that wear me down in this life. I give to you. Free me from those things today so that I can look forward with hope to the awesome future that you have for me and all of the things that you have prepared for me as I'm obedient to you. God, we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope you have an awesome, incredible day. Know God's freedom in the richest and fullest of ways. That's my prayer for you today. I look forward to seeing you when I come back.